Welcome back to Final Fantasy VII. Cloud just waking up after his uh, little dream before, of course. Or, yeah, nightmare, as Barrett would put it. <coughs> oh, nice email out response there. How are you feeling? Oh, no, not good. Well, we'll be a man and say we're okay, even though we're clearly suffering. <clears throat> Good thing we had that dream to tell us exactly where Aeris was going. That's a very good question. Why did she go by herself? <clears throat> to protect herself from you, I suppose. Uh oh, Tifa's not going to like the other bit of the dream then. Yeah, Sephiroth already knows. Fail. <laughs> yep, that has got a point. It is exactly because of you, Cloud. That's why I hang your head in shame. It's weird that everybody thinks it's so strange that, you know, Cloud, like, gave him the material or whatever. When this is a world where magic exists, you, you think, I mean, we even have a, a material that lets you, like, hypnotize enemy mobs. So you may be even more surprised to realize that it's actually not because of magic that is happening. Oh, that's not very nice, Barrett. Not cool. That's what she said. That's also what she said. I'm sorry, that was that was beneath me. Of course we're not giving up on the journey. You probably could figure that one out <laughs> by yourself. Especially seeing this video is a lot longer, but hey, it could have been another 10 minutes of just game over screen. The credits rolling. <laughs> Oh, that's a strangely optimistic attitude. <laughs> Your spiky white head, Barrett. You're, you're getting dangerously close to a line you're crossing there. Of course he is, he's Barrett. When has he ever been wrong, other than the many times he has been? Well then, now we're back in control and we've got to go find Aeris, and um, yeah, she's at the City of the Ancients, not that we have any idea where that is, but um, yeah, I, I was having played it before, of course I know exactly where it is, but I have to be completely honest, I can't remember uh, who you have to talk to to tell you. I'm just going to quickly change up the party, throw uh, Red 13, I guess Vincent in now, because of course we didn't have Aeris for a bit, um, yeah, and, and throw some equipment around and stuff. I really should have bought him some more uh, items now that I think about it, because I knew this was coming, but... Oh well, it doesn't really matter. I I'll get by with this just fine. As for materia though, uh, 
Vincent's a bit of an odd case, if I'm going to be honest, because uh, his limit break, you lose control of him. He just does what he wants, basically. And uh, you, you can't uh, tell him what to do, so uh, I personally, I think that most of the magic material are really quite useless on him. I mean, they're not awful, don't get me wrong, because obviously you're not in limit break form the entire time. But, you know, once you once you are, you're kind of just screwing yourself over by having loads of materia that nerfs his stats or whatever. And he can't even use them anyway. So we're mainly going to try and put some uh, materia that don't have like negative effects on. So, in fact, I'm probably just going to leave him with uh, very few materia. I mean, he doesn't really need them. But um, we did get all of Aeris materia back, though, which is good. So I can uh, give Red 13... Um, Uh, yeah, I can give Red 13 her healing material, so he'll, he'll be our healer then for a bit. <clears throat> I have to admit, it's pretty dangerous of Aeris to just go up there though, but leave all of her material behind, because, you know, she's a pretty rubbish physical fighter. <laughs> no, yeah, I can get rid of poison, since when do I ever use poison? I don't even know why I have it equipped, it's useless. Oh well. I think we're pretty much ready. So, if we head down, you'll see the uh, tiny bronco is actually down here now. So, anyway, as I was saying before, sorry about the random delay. Yeah, the City of the Ancients. I can't remember who you have to talk to to tell you where it is. So, I'm afraid I'm going to kind of skip that part and just head straight there. But, you know, it's not a big deal. As you saw from the, uh, the Temple of the Ancients guy, he doesn't really say anything other than that, oh yeah, it's in that direction or whatever. So, it's not exactly like, oh my god, you know, missing out on like the epic law breaking tale. So, uh, yeah, where is the City of the Ancients, you're probably wondering. It's um, not this way, because it's a dead end. But it's right, it's on like the northernmost continent bit. If you look at the map in the uh, bottom right, you can see... Uh, we we kind of need to head to like the lower dot on it. That's, um, it's not the City of the Ancients, but it's the place where we have to go to get there. You'll see when we get there. It's a bit of an odd trek with the tiny bronco over there, but... You can pretty much uh, get there just by following the, uh, you know, the edge of the continent. Though as you saw right at the start, I took uh, the shortcut through the um, river, because it's faster. Anyway, nearly there now. Have a little mini-game to do before we can actually get into the area where the city is, which we're about to see now. This uh, giant like bone thing, that's actually the town I was talking about. It's called Bone Village, I guess you can kind of see why. Welcome to Bone Village, yeah. And this guy is strangely informed about Aeris and the City of the Ancients. Wow, that was a very, very useless bit of information. It's like, where is it? He just says, oh, you mean the Forgotten City? I would tell you, but nah. Oh well, Avis went to the Sleeping Forest. To get in there, though, you need the Lunar Harp, which is what we need this minigame for. No, we, we do want the Lunar Harp. Okay, so now we have this minigame to dig for. What you need to do is um, summon a staff member. You can see they're by pressing square. And uh, they'll go and stand where you are. And uh, after you've put down some staff members, you um, do the done thing, and it sets off an explosion. And, um, yeah, the, basically how it works then is all three of the staff members will turn to look at where at the direction from where they're standing that the treasure's in. So, uh, yeah, it's quite easy. All you have to do is go and stand where their line of sight meets and dig there. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just go ahead and bit, like detonate the explosives now. Now, as you can see, it's kind of like over this way. So that guy I put down at the bottom of the ladder is utterly useless. But I think it's kind of like here, isn't it? It's just in front of this green person. Cool. And now we get the treasure. 
Where is Loon Harp? Yeah, as you can see, it's a very easy mini game. Though, though I have to be completely honest, there aren't actually that many good rewards, which is a bit of a shame, really. But uh, later on, you can get another key item, which is useful. But uh, it's like a key that lets you get back into Midgar. And uh, you don't need to get it, but there's some other, other items there, like ultimate weapons and stuff, so yeah. Anyway, all the Sleeping Forest awoke. I guess it should no longer be called the Sleeping Forest then. But um, yeah, in this area, you might have seen it just a minute ago, there's actually a summon material that just floats around. Oh, there it is. Ah, that's quick. Yeah, it kind of teleports around and just floats about, so it can be a pain to catch. But once you get it, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, Kijata? I don't know, it's like a silent... whatever. Oh well, I'll showcase that in the next fight then, so you can see him. <laughs> There's nice uh, treasure here though, oh, the other way though. Which will come in very handy. It is. Water ring, which uh, means you absorb water damage, so you know, any water damage on a character actually heals them instead, it doesn't... Uh... Uh, yeah, it doesn't damage them. And it, it's not nullified either, it's an actual, you know, full, well not full, but you know, it's a heal, which is really, really quite useful. Of course you need to be fighting enemies to actually use water attacks first. <laughs> but we're actually coming up to one, so it's a bit of a conveniently placed uh, thing, I'm going to be honest. Anyway, Jarka. As you can see, he uh, does, like, um, different elemental damage, he does fire, he does ice, and he does uh, lightning, and he does another one here, but it's physical damage. I have to admit, I'm not sure if I like this summon. It's a cool animation, don't get me wrong, it's one of the better animations, and he looks quite funny just standing there, though. but, um, oh yeah, and he does loads of damage, but the problem with him is because of that, <coughs> because of the three different elemental types of damage he deals, um, there's a lot of mobs that are immune to it. If they're immune to just one of the elements, then uh, it's going to do no damage most of the time. Which is kind of annoying. Especially if they're like... Uh, you can imagine a lot of mobs who are, let's say, ice, will be vulnerable to fire but absorb ice damage. But if you use it, it's not going to do anything, which is quite a pain. So it's not one of the more useful summons, if you ask me. It's, it's alright, though. I mean, there aren't that many mobs that are immune to elements, so you know what I mean. It's not a big deal, but at the same time, it's I wouldn't hesitate to replace it. Right, well, now we're in the City of the Ancients. And uh, there's quite a lot of treasures to be found here, actually, before we go and find Avis. So we'll just have a bit of a look around. Surprisingly, there's not actually random battles here at the moment. Which, uh, yeah, I don't know, I always find that slightly weird for some reason. It looks like the kind of place that would, doesn't it? Oh well, there's a save point, but we don't want that. We want the chest at the top floor. Oh, or I could utterly fail to open the chest. There we go, a magic source. Oh my god, I still haven't used those sources I've got just sitting in my inventory. I seriously need to do that. <laughs> And there's another treasure in this room here. This is, isn't the way you have to go, but yeah, there's a very, very nice treasure here, which we'll have a look at. There we go, Aurora Armour. That's a very, very, really, such a nice piece of armour at this point in the game. It's just so good. Uh, I'm actually going to throw it on Red 13. He's always gold armour on. Where are you? There we go. You can see that's such a huge upgrade in every possible way for Red 13, and it drains cold attacks as well. So, uh, just like the water ring, well, it's not like the water ring, the water ring is uh, water damage, the Aurora Armour is ice damage. So, yeah. Um, what was I doing? I'm actually going to throw the water ring on Vincent, I think. There it is. Okay, cool. Continu uh, continuing on. That's all there is in this area at the moment, if I recall correctly, so we'll head back a bit. Quite a long way to run, but due to ra no random battles, you know, it's not really a, it doesn't take long at all or anything. I suppose the reason why is because you just came from the Temple of the Ancients, which is, you know, kind of bursting with random battles. So they didn't really think having yet another dungeon filled with, you know, hundreds more of them would probably be that entertaining. Everyone wanted a bit of a uh, story based stuff. 
Anyway, these are actually houses, these little hut things, and they have stuff in them. More chests. Guard sauce, oh. Sauces, more of them. I promise at some point I'm going to use those sauces. <laughs> you just don't need to, though, really. The game's not that hard. Um, where am I going? <clears throat> oh, yeah, the other house up here. Cool. More items. And uh, there's actually a place you can rest here. Which is here. <clears throat> and something you might find slightly odd about this is that um, you come in here and they say, oh, maybe we should take a short nap, etc. But the game actually can't continue on until you rest for some reason. Like, the, the way forward is closed until you uh, sleep here, which is a bit strange, really. I don't really, I don't know, it seems a little bit pointless to me. There is a little bit of, you know, there's a little bit of dialogue going on now, though. But it's nothing, you know, horrifically, whoa, you know, game-changing. Well, maybe we shouldn't have wasted time sleeping then, gah. <laughs> He feels it in his fingers. He feels it in his toes. So that's that sleeping scene done with. So onwards we go. So now you've probably guessed we're going to take the one road that we didn't take before, which is the very middle road in this like crossroads bit right at the start. Here we go. Time to head up there then. Kind of weird how overgrown this place is. I guess it's a, the Forgotten City or whatever, but still. What the hell is that? Like a giant shell as well. The ancients were very strange people, I've got to say. No offence, ancients, but yeah. You have weird taste in furniture. So, down that like ghostly stairway is where we're meant to go, but we have a materia first, which is Comet. And Comet is really quite powerful, actually. I, I'll, I'll equip it at some point soon. But um, this video is basically about to come to an end. We're kind of running a little bit over time here. I like to have my videos at just about 50, uh, 15 minutes long. So we'll just get to the bottom of these stairs and there's a save point there. And that'll be a good time to save. Here we go. Well, thanks very much for watching and you'll see the conclusion of this bit of story next time. So uh, yeah, remember to watch. Next time big things will happen, I promise. I promise.